Man, what a race. I gotta say, that was really, really fun to watch, and I don't really see any way you can complain about the race itself. So today, I'm gonna cover two things. Of course, the race itself, as well as the debate that keeps going on about whether or not this track should be reconfigured into a short track for the long term. We're going to get into both. So starting off with the race, I think right away the car made the biggest factor and it's obvious in two ways. One, I think the higher horsepower made running different lines matter again. When you looked at drivers who were driving on the bottom, of course, they could dive it down into the corner, but upon exit of the corner, those who took it a little easier into the corner on the high side got a much bigger run with higher momentum, and that generally became the fastest way around the track. I think that you saw this go away with the 2019 sort of package where everyone had to keep the momentum up or they would get completely freight trained. Yes, Auto Club put a good race in 2020 up with this kind of thing, but it wasn't great by any means and it wasn't to the potential that we reached yesterday. Also, the lack of downforce I think made handling matter again. We saw it in practice, we saw it in the race, qualifying, cars, single cars spinning out and drivers having a tough time just keeping it under them for laps on end. There weren't many very long runs, and a lot of people thought maybe there would have been a lot of green flag pit stops. Not really, unless it was for someone who almost spun out. So in that respect, I feel like a piece of NASCAR has been put back into the racing. The slot car racing we had the last couple of years was not real NASCAR racing in my opinion. It was gimmick racing. It was gimmick racing to try and make it look like the Gen 6 had better racing when it really didn't. This, in my opinion, is much more like quote-unquote real racing. And you see, there was plenty of parody in my opinion. Yes, you had your guys who were always up front. Your Joey Logano's, your Kyle Larson's, your Chase Elliott's. We knew those guys would be up front. Those guys are some of the top five, if not top three, best drivers in cup right now. But then there were others, others that for years we've said would have done better if it were for a better package, better equipment, whatever it may be. Tyler Reddick, for instance, was the dominant guy of the day. Everyone's been on Tyler Reddick saying how great he's going to be, including our defending champion, Kyle Larson. But for years, Reddick has been sort of held back by the RCR equipment, at least in many's eyes. But now, with the cars being a lot closer together and a car that fits his driving style better, Reddick showed out yesterday. And had it not been for a flat tire and ill-timed wreck with William Byron, he probably would have won that race handily. But there was one guy that was with him for most of the day, and that was Eric Jones. Jones is another one that many think is a lot better than his results have shown and just needs a better chance. And then somebody who I've been really high on coming into this season really showed out as well, and really was competitive, and that was Chase Briscoe, who even was leading laps over the aforementioned Reddick and Jones at different points. And also, you gotta say, the Auto Club track really played a big factor in this. This may have been the best flag-to-flag -flag Auto Club race in the track's history for NASCAR. And the reasoning is pretty simple. When you have a car that drives like the next-gen car seems to be driving like, with a track as old as Auto Club, you're going to have a track that is very difficult for the drivers, but is a driver's track, so different drivers will excel at different points. So, I gotta say, I am extremely happy with this, but I think this makes another question a little more muddy. Should the proposed Auto Club short track still happen? This is a question that a lot of people have said no to, a lot of people have had their minds changed to know about, and a lot of people are saying, no, we need to leave Auto Club as is. So I'm going to be a bit of a contrarian here, because I still believe, even after how good that race was, that the short track should happen. Now, it may seem stupid after how good of a race we saw, but there are a few factors, in my opinion, that are really going to play into Auto Club probably not being the best long term in being a two mile track. Number one, the next gen is a new car. This is a new car that the teams have not figured out yet. They had to change stuff last minute in November and December to a 670 package, and now they're still playing catch up. Plus, we have a supply chain shortage, so we don't know what exactly the next gen in full fruition will be like. Teams are going to figure this out. Look at 2013, when the Gen 6 came out. 
teams hadn't figured it out, and in my opinion, that was the best race at Auto Club Speedway. And while the races a couple years later were pretty good in 2014, 15, and 16, once you got past then, Auto Club wasn't the greatest track. Now, a lot of it had to do, I think, with the package, but a lot of it had to do with the track itself. The track surface is old. There's no way around it. It's what made the track good yesterday. But the problem is... It hasn't been repaved since 1996. It means that this surface does not have long, in my opinion. And maybe this reached a sweet spot for the next-gen car, but this isn't going to be how the track is next year, the year after, or so on and so forth. So a repave is necessary, much sooner than a lot of fans want to accept. And with a point of reference to look at, you got to look at Michigan International Speedway's repave. Now, a lot of you may say, well, that was pretty recent. Well, Time has crept on and Michigan's repave has been further and further in the past. This year will be the 11th year that this surface has been used in NASCAR Cup Series racing for Michigan. And I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying the racing has been mediocre at best since this repave. Sure, 2014 was about the best we got, but since then, with the lower horsepower that we have now compared to then, it has not been good overall. There's been good moments, but it has not been good overall. And I'd say that Auto Club is probably going to be more similar to Michigan's repave than that of, say, Kansas, which has aged pretty well. Plus, California, especially in Fontana, is not going to be as abrasive when it comes to weather and weathering of the track than it would in a Michigan or a Kansas, where you have harsh Midwestern winters. And you have to remember that it took well over a decade for Auto Club Speedway to get well accepted and good racing at the track. Remember, before 2011 or so, Auto Club was generally known as a pretty subpar racetrack who could have a good race every now and then. We would be going right back to that for probably the entire duration of the next gen era if they move on to another car in 10 to 15 years. Think about that. This might be the best we get because of the needed repave. NASCAR has shown a lot of interest in putting the finale out west. We currently have the finale in Phoenix, but NASCAR overall has really been pushing to get more of the West Coast audience. I mean, we saw it a few weeks ago with the LA Clash. We've seen it with the increased interest in what to do with Auto Club Speedway, the Phoenix finale I talked about earlier. We've seen a ton of West Coast interest in big ways from NASCAR. And I think that a short track would actually be the best way to do this to get the finale to somewhere better than Phoenix, but still out West like NASCAR's plans. And also a short track will have consistently better racing than a two-mile speedway that's been freshly repaved. And it will have better racing throughout its entire life cycle at that as well. Now, you also can artificially increase the demand for tickets out there. See, a short track doesn't need to have 70 to 90,000 seats at it. Look at that race that you saw yesterday. It's about 70% full in a 68,000 seat grandstand, and that's not even adding in the probably 20 to 30,000 people that were in the infield. So a short track like this will probably have 40 to 50,000 seats and will look much better on TV packed, which is important for NASCAR, for the networks, for sponsors, and in general, the sport itself. So I know it's not a popular opinion right now, but I think in the long term, if this does go through, because it still is up in the air, I think it will be the better choice to go with a short track. It's not the popular one, but I think it is the better one long term. Now, with that, I want to hear your thoughts on both of these topics. Number one, what'd you think of the race? And number two, do you think, after hearing what I've said, that Auto Club should be reconfigured into a half mile short track? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video. Share this video and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content throughout the season. And also to all my great channel members, thank you so much for your support. It means the world. So until next time, have a good one.